If you're struggling to understand why you can't leave your abusive boyfriend or husband despite everything they've done to you, I'm going to break down the science behind why this is, so buckle up. Now, if you haven't heard of this, your mind will be blown. You love them, but you also often can't stand them. He hurts you, but you crave his comfort. You see, it's not as simple as just packing up and leaving. Abusers and narcissists have a way of manipulating their victims into staying. It's a psychological phenomenon, and there are seven stages to how victims end up feeling addicted to their abusers and trapped in the relationship. It's called a trauma bond. So let's go through them, and then I'm going to finish with the most important part, how to overcome this, okay? Stage one, idealization and love bombing. Your abuser makes you feel like you're the only person in the world. They put you on a pedestal. They make you feel like you're everything that they ever wanted. Your abuser showers you with excessive affection, attention, praise, creating an intense emotional connection. Now, this stage is designed to make you feel special and valued, and it establishes a strong bond that will later be exploited. It's when they lay the groundwork. Stage two is called trust and dependency. You begin to trust your abuser and you become dependent on them for validation, safety, and security. This is when you start to rely on your abuser for emotional support and validation, and you believe that he's your sole source of comfort. Now, this stage is characterized by the abuser's manipulation of your emotions, and that creates a cycle of intermittent reinforcement that actually fosters a strong bond despite the abuse. Stage three is devaluation. This is when you start to notice that things are a little bit off. Your abuser begins to criticize and belittle you. You're still experiencing some good in the relationship at the same time. The devaluation is eroding your self-esteem and your sense of self-worth. This stage further entrenches your dependency on them and you kind of feel like you deserve the mistreatment. You feel like no one else will care for you the way that your abuser does. And this deepens the trauma bond. You start feeling guilty for the things that your abuser says that you're doing wrong. They make you feel like everything that's happening is your fault. Stage four is gaslighting and fear. Now, this involves your abuser manipulating your perception of reality, causing you to question your own experiences, your own memories. This psychological manipulation further isolates you and strengthens your reliance on the abuser. They present themselves as the only source of truth, solidifying the trauma bond. You start fearing what might happen if you leave. Stage five is control and enmeshment. You feel like you're part of your abuser and they're part of you. This stage is marked by your abuser exerting dominance over you by dictating your actions, your thoughts, and feelings. By this stage, you've become fully dependent on them and you feel powerless to escape. Stage six is loss of self and isolation. Your identity and sense of self becomes eroded because of the ongoing abuse and constant manipulation. Now, you're losing your ability to trust your own judgment and experiences. You feel completely enmeshed with him, further solidifying the trauma bond and honestly making it feel impossible to break free from the abusive relationship. You feel trapped and desperate. Many abusers isolate you from friends and family, and that makes it even harder for you to leave. Stage seven is addiction and desensitization. You become desensitized to the abuse and it starts feeling normal. You convince yourself that it's not that bad and that frankly, it's better than being alone. In this stage, you become emotionally and psychologically addicted to the cycle of abuse and intermittent reinforcement from your abuser. You experience intense withdrawal symptoms if you attempt to end the relationship, so you can very easily get sucked back in. The cycle of abuse always includes positive reinforcement, and it's why your abuser is kind sometimes and mean other times. It's all part of the cycle. If they were mean 24 hours a day, you would leave. The good times exist specifically to facilitate the bad. The cycle grooms you to tolerate more abuse and the good times often, but not always, are few and far between. You start to see your abuser as two people, good and bad, the knife and the band-aid. And this confusion, it's called cognitive dissonance. It's a crucial component of how trauma bonds work in abusive relationships. Now, it's a term that's used to describe that mental discomfort that arises when a person holds two or more conflicting beliefs or values. It manifests in your conflicting feelings of love and hate towards your abuser. 
You feel like you can't live without him, despite the harm he causes, and this creates a sense of confusion and internal turmoil. Cognitive dissonance causes you to rationalize your abuser's behavior and blame yourself for the abuse. You believe that the abuser is a good person who simply is going through a tough time or that you deserve the abuse because of your own flaws or shortcomings, or even that you're somehow provoking the abuse that's inflicted upon you. This kind of thinking further entrenches the trauma bond and it makes it even more difficult for you to leave the relationship. A trauma bond is not a reflection of your inability to make good choices. It's not your fault and honestly, it can happen to anyone. But here's the thing, and this is the most important part that you need to know. Breaking a trauma bond is possible. It's not easy, but it is possible. Now I'm gonna outline my three steps to breaking a trauma bond, and I go through them in intense detail in my trauma bond recovery course. Step one, education. You need to educate yourself about abuse tactics, trauma bonds, cognitive dissonance. This will bring you clarity and help you understand what's actually happening. Once you have a clear understanding of the situation, you need to take a deep dive into yourself and your past experiences. This leads us into step two, learning about yourself. Dig into your childhood traumas and your unmet needs. Why did this relationship feel both awful and yet comfortable or normal? What patterns can you recognize? Now, I know it's difficult and frankly, unbelievably painful to confront your childhood traumas and the patterns that led you to this point, but it's necessary to unpack them but always from a place of understanding, not judgment. This will help you gain clarity and identify the behaviors and beliefs that have kept you trapped in the trauma bond. Step three is build a future. Now, your future does not include your abuser, so you need to identify your plans and the steps on actually how to achieve them. You need to learn how to love yourself again and either build a support system if you don't have one or better utilize the one that you have. Imagine you're stuck on a roller coaster ride that's full of ups and downs, and you just can't seem to get off. When things are good, it feels amazing, like you're soaring high and nothing can bring you down. But then, out of nowhere, the ride plunges and everything feels dark and heavy. You keep holding on to the hope that the good times will return, and that's what keeps you strapped in, even when you know deep down you should get off the ride. That's kind of how a trauma bond feels. Are you ready to stop feeling this way? Breaking the trauma bond is hard, but it's honestly made even harder when you don't know how. So understanding the stages of how it's all formed, all of your abuser's tactics is key as your very first step. Now, if you want the path clearly laid out step-by-step step for you so you have actionable tasks and can build real coping skills, you need to be in the trauma bond recovery course. It's designed by a survivor for survivors and can help you build the future that you deserve. Are you ready?